Hello friends, this video on cell part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we are talking about all this, it, it becomes very important to talk about gene. Because we often see that, okay, uh, I mean, sometimes you would have seen people scolding each other like, okay, you are so lazy, that's in your gene because everybody in your family is lazy. So what they try to say is that there are certain traits which are present in your genes and they, they, and they get carried off from one generation to the next generation. So how they get carried from one generation to the next generation? Through DNA. So, and this DNA remains inside the cell. So at that cellular level, the information are being getting carried over from one generation to the next generation. So genes are nothing but the units of inheritance. So if you look at the structure of a chromosome, so on a chromosome you can see that there are genes which are located on chromosome. Now each gene can correspond to a particular trait. For example, you, you have, might have a gene for a, for a specific eye color, you might have a particular gene for a specific hair color. So for every trait you have a particular gene. And because of these genes, you can actually resemble stuff with between one generation and next. So looking at this family picture, you can see that the, this couple, they have two kids. So if you look at this kid, the hair color of this kid is similar to his father. But the hair color of this kid is quite similar to his mother. If you look at the eye color, so again the eye color of this kid is similar to the eye color of the mother. But the eye color of this kid is different from both father and mother. So some traits might be new, but there are some traits which are carried from the previous generation. So genes are actually the units of inheritance. They control the traits of living organisms. So they decide which traits will be similar and which traits will be different. So that's how it regulates the traits of living organisms. So where are these genes located? Now inside our body we have so many cells. Now, if you concentrate on one particular cell, so one particular cell would be, would be like this and inside this cell we have something called nucleus. So now if we look at nucleus, so if, if you try to magnify the nucleus, this is how it will look like. So inside this nucleus, what are these? This is the nucleolus. So this dense region is the nucleolus. And what are these thread-like structures? These are nothing but the chromatin. Now, these chromatin during cell division will condense to form chromosome. So, this is a chromosome, which is a rod-shaped structure, as you can see here. Now, on these chromosomes, you have genes for different traits. The yellow-colored structures, which you see here, these are the genes. And each gene is for a specific trait, which you see in an individual. Now, what are these genes made up of? These genes contain nothing but DNA. So, DNA is a nucleic acid, that is DNA deoxyribonucleic acid that is the full form of DNA and it has a double stranded structure like this. Now I will not get into all these details right now because it will become too much complicated for you. Now why I am just touching upon it is you should at least have some idea that okay what is there inside our body. Now when you go to your higher classes you will get to know how exactly each of these behave. So now that we have discussed about so many important things, let us quickly see the significance of nucleus. So we saw that nucleus is very important for cell division. Nucleus is very important for inheritance also. So nucleus is the control center of the cell. It helps in movement, that is movement of substances like ribosomes, proteins and RNA through nuclear pores from nucleolus to cytoplasm. So these movement of substances is very, very important. That's because it is, you just think of a situation like this. For example, your mother prepares food for the entire family and she prepares the food inside the kitchen of your house. Correct? So now... Let us say you are at your school, your father is at, your, at his office, your brother is in his college. So everybody is in different place and your mother is cooking food inside your house. Now if she wants to send the cooked food as in, in the form of difference to each one of you, she needs somebody who can carry it to each one of you. 
right so if the food remains packed inside your kitchen will you be able to eat it from your school no so you need somebody who can carry the food from your kitchen to your school similarly your father would need somebody to carry the food from your kitchen to his office similarly your brother would need it to be carried from the kitchen to his college so you need a medium which can actually help in transferring the food item from the source to the right destination so exactly the same thing is being done here so here due to the presence of the nuclear pores on the nuclear membrane so the substances which get synthesized inside the nucleus that can come out of the nucleus and can reach other parts of the cell similarly the substances which are present outside the cell and they need to enter inside the nucleus they can also enter through the nuclear pores so that is how movement of substances is also very very important Next is cellular reproduction. The chromosomes which are present inside the nucleus, they play a very important role during cell division when new cells are formed. Now we will understand the process of cell division uh, in class 11th because right now we do not have it in our syllabus. So in cell division, new cells will be formed. So those new cells need to have some traits from the parent cells, right? So for how will they get it? They will get it through the genes and where are the genes located genes are located on the chromosomes so one thing is without chromosome cell division is not possible so it plays a major role in cell division now if cell division doesn't happen then what will happen new cells will not be formed so in that case life will stop existing because for life to exist cells should keep on multiplying more and more cells should be formed so for formation of new cells and also for the inheritance concept. Nucleus plays a very important role and that is why nucleus is called the control center of the cell because without nucleus your cells will stop multiplying and as a result life will stop existing. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.